This is a short video about what a path connected topological space is. So here's a definition of what a path is first. So a path in a topological space X with topology T. So a path is just a continuous function from the interval along the real line from zero to one, which I've drawn for you right here, uh, from there to your space X, uh, where the initial point, so when you plug in zero, we'll call that, uh, F of zero, we'll call that the initial point, and F of one is what we'll call the terminal point. Terminal point. So just kind of a picture, we're saying that if I've got some topological space X here, then a path from one point to another should just be some continuous function that connects these two points. And again, we'll just call F of zero the, ter the initial point, and we'll call F of one the terminal point here. And so uh, maybe one more thing, when it says in a topological space, notice this path is completely contained inside the space X. Um, you know, it's not going out of X like that path is. So it's gotta be completely contained inside of it. And that takes me to the definition of what a path connected or pathwise connected, same thing, space is. So we'll say that a topological space is pathwise connected if for each pair of points that you pick in your space, uh, X and Y, there has to be a path F from X to Y. So in other words, there's gotta be a path with F of zero equal to X and F of Y equal to one. So in my picture above here, uh, I hope that you agree with me that that little blob there, if we assume that maybe that's a little blob in the plane, that would be a path connected subset of the plane because for any two points that I picked like that, it's possible to connect them and to connect them in a way that stays completely inside the space X. Um, that's, that's all we're doing. So if I go down below, in fact, the whole plane itself is path connected. The whole plane with the usual topology is path connected. So all you have to do to show something is path connected is just come up with a path. There are lots of different paths you could choose from in the plane. Maybe I'll just do it with a line. So if I picked two arbitrary points in the plane, x1, y1, and x2, y2, I could tell you about a path that connects these two points. I'll just take the line segment that connects those two points. So that would be the function f, where uh, the first coordinate should be one minus t times the first x coordinate plus t times the second x coordinate. And uh, why did I do that? Well, this here, t is the variable, say, like the variable is function, then that just defines a line. And so um, in that case, then, that's continuous. And so what else do I notice? Maybe I'll say that in a second. And then what am I doing over here? Just the same thing with the y coordinates. One minus t times y1 plus t times y2. So why, what's the, what the goofy one minus t in each spot and the t's? Well, it's because t takes values from zero to one. So maybe notice when t is equal to zero, if t is zero, then this uh, whole piece just becomes x1 and this is gone. So you just get x1. Similarly, you get y1 out of this and this is gone. So in other words, f of zero is my first point x1, y1. And uh, similarly, when you plug in t equals one, that knocks this out and you're just left with x2. And then the second, the second coordinate, when t equals one, y one's gone because of that, and you're just left with y two. So in other words, f of one is x two, y two. So again, this is just another way to talk about this line segment that connects these two points. So because I could do that for any two points I picked in the plane, the plane is path connected. So here are some kind of theorems, big theorems in this section on path connected spaces. Any path connected space has to be just regular old connected as well. So the basic idea for that was, well, what if the space was get disconnected? Well then intuitively, maybe you're thinking it looks something like this. Well then it's not possible for a path to go from this point to this point without leaving, going into the void there, leaving X. So there's no path then that connects those two points. So there can't be a path from one piece to the other piece. When I say piece, I mean this connected piece and this connected piece. There's no path between them that stays inside of X. So we can't be path connected. So it's kind of the contrapositive of that theorem if you want to think of it that way. So uh, here's kind of a big picture of what's going on too. What does that theorem imply? Or what's another way to think about that theorem above? Well, path connected spaces are a nice type of connected spaces. So maybe another way to think about this is like we said, if you're path connected, you're here, well then you're also in the connected circle, so you're connected. But then that also suggests that there are connected spaces that are not path connected, so somebody that lives like right here. And a good example of that would be the topologist sine curve. So that's something that the uh, 
you could read about where they go into a lot more detail about why the topologist sine curve is connected but not path connected. This is one of the things that uh, people study is like, um, you know, can I think of a space that has this property but not this property and, and all that good stuff to stretch the limitations of some of this theory. So to continue, gotta erase some of this stuff here. All right. The next definition that we need to, that we care about for right now is what's the idea of a path component in a space. So a path component is an equivalence class of the following equivalence relation. So the equivalence relation is x is equivalent to y if there exists a path connected subset of x that just contains both of those points x and y. So two points are equivalent to each other if there's some path connected subset that contains them both. Let me remind you about equivalence classes. So in some sense, they're sort of like the largest subsets that you're left with after you've identified all the things that are equivalent to each other. And I think we've had some experience with at least one equivalence relation so far. If you had the integers say, going back to maybe like the proofs class, remember that one way we could say two integers are equivalent is if maybe three divides their difference, b minus a. So remember this is uh, like the integers mod three, if you've heard of that before. But let's think about what are the equivalence classes on the integers if this is the equivalence relation. Well, you'd get three of them. You would have uh, all these numbers, 0, 3, 6. All those numbers are equivalent to each other because if you picked any two of them, say 6 and negative 3, their difference would be uh, 9, say, and 3 divides 9. So that means that 6 and negative 3 are equivalent to each other. So they fall into the same category if you want to think of it that way. Similarly here, I'm saying that 7 and 1 are equivalent to each other because they're different. 6 is divisible by 3. Uh, what else though? 3 and 4 are not equivalent to each other because their difference is 1, which is not divisible by 3. So that's why they lie in different sets. So I hope that makes sense how we've split the integers into these three pieces. So those are called the equivalence classes. And so in some sense, uh, the equivalence classes, I've said in some sense a lot, the equivalence classes partition your set into these different pieces here. And notice too, that like nothing else fits inside of this. And that's what I mean by the largest subset that you're left with after you've identified all the things that are equivalent to each other. Nothing else fits inside of that highlighted set. So why am I telling you about this? Well, I wanna go back to this kind of equivalence class definition of what a path component is. Another way to think about that is, think of these path components as just being the largest path connected subsets of your space. So to give you a picture, it should be kind of intuitive. Let's say my space consists of these three pieces here. What are the path components? Well, each one of those things individually looks path connected. So X has three path components. So the components are just what are the biggest path connected spaces or path connected subsets of your set? What are the largest path connected subsets of your set? 